And also the markets were looking at this this morning, Consumer Price Index report. It came out showing that prices jumped the most in 16 months, largely driven by higher gas prices. What does that mean, though, for your wallet? Joining us from Philadelphia in a Fox Business exclusive is Jay Bryson, global economist at Wells Fargo. And Jay, let's start with CPI in particular. Uh, are, we, are you worried about consumer inflation at all? Not in general. I mean, obviously, there's some parts of the CPI that are moving around right now. Obviously, energy was up. Uh, you know, we're looking at some food price increases. But in general, these things make up a relatively small part of the overall CPI. It's about 20 percent or so. And so if you look at the so-called core number, that was up only 0.1 percent year over year, only 0.8. I mean, we're still at the lowest levels we've been at in like 50 some years. So so in general, no, I'm not really wildly concerned about CPI inflation right now. OK, let me talk to you about the U.S trade deficit. We got November and exports were actually up. I mean, part of that was the dollar story, but there was also strong demand from overseas for our products. Do you view that as a, as a positive, Jay? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's a big stimulus for, for the economy right now. I mean, it looks like you know, trade is going to add maybe one and a half percentage points to the GDP growth rate in the fourth quarter. So, I mean, we're looking for a GDP growth rate in the fourth quarter of about three and a half percent. That's a pretty decent number. And so, you know, if, if the rest of the world continues to grow, which we think is probably likely, then that's a boost to our exports and that helps to stimulate the U.S. economy. We just showed our viewers uh, the, the, trade, the trade chart between China and the United States. And here's the thing with China, and I'm wondering if you're concerned about this at all, is that our imports from China are actually outpacing our exports to China. They're the global powerhouse at this point. Are you worried about the stats we're seeing right now? You know, in general, no. I mean, as a macroeconomist, I don't worry about bilateral trade deficits. I mean, you would worry about the overall deficit, and that's somewhat uh, that's somewhat muted right now. I mean, I guess the thing that that uh, it was worrying potentially about that bilateral trade deficit with China is that becomes a sore point between you know the United States and China, and it could lead to trade frictions, and it could potentially lead to some trade sanctions down the line, and that's in nobody's interest. So, you know, President Hu is coming to meet President Obama this week, and so that's certainly going to be a, a topic of discussion between those two leaders. Oh, and we're going to be covering that, absolutely. Let me ask you one other thing. You know, you're fairly bullish about the economy for 2011. Uh, at the same time, there's one thing you say could really hurt us this year, and we need to worry about it. What is it, Jay? It's the European sovereign debt crisis. Uh, I mean, I think that's a huge thing to keep our, our, keep our eye on. All right. Any particular piece of Europe? I mean, are you worried about Spain? I mean, Portugal survived a bond sale this week, but... You know, they say yeah. they don't need help, but, you know, Ireland said that too, remember? Yeah, we're, we're not, yeah, right, exactly. I mean, we're not out of the woods on this one yet. I mean, Portugal is the closest one, and then if Portugal were to go down, then people start to look at Spain, and, and then the thing can start to unravel pretty quickly. I mean, here, here's the thing. You, you know, U.S. banks have very little exposure to some of those peripheral government bonds, but... European banks have a lot of exposure, and, and American banks have the exposure to the European banks. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, potentially if things start to unravel in Europe and some European banks really have some problems, that could reverberate back on U.S. banks who have the exposure to the European London banks. So banks. it's definitely something to keep, it, yeah. keep an eye on. London banks, absolutely. Jay Bryson, global economist at Wells Fargo. Jay, thank you very much for being on the show. Thanks for having me.